Hi guys, so as promised, I am making a little video to help you understand this anesthesia math business. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know not to freak out a whole lot about this. I will not make you do these on your final. Um, the odds of you having to do these in real life are slim to none unless you work specifically for an anesthesiologist or a nurse anesthetist. Um, okay, so for our first example, I put the little note up here that the formula for the math problem to calculate anesthesia billing is B plus T plus M times the locality specific conversion, and that's going to give you your anesthesia fee. So what that translates loosely to is code specific base unit value plus the anesthesia unit and time, and then uh, plus the modifying units. So any modifiers that we throw on there and their relative values. And then we time that um, by the conversion specific fee per locality. Okay, so for the first example, we have a 25-year-old patient uh, with diabetes. It looks like they're con it's controlled. And she underwent a planned vaginal delivery. And during her delivery, there was neuroaxial labor anesthesia administered by an anesthesiologist. The review of the patient record indicates 45 minutes of anesthesia time. So using the conversion factor for Solano County, which I'm going to show you in a minute, we need to figure out what the payment for anesthesia services will be calculated as. So if you flip to page 48 in your CPT manual, you will find that the code for uh, neuroaxial labor anesthesia administration is, hang on, let me flip back there. 01967, down at the very bottom of page 48. And it tells you very specifically when you look at that code that it is anesthesia for planned vaginal delivery, and this includes any repeat subarachnoid needle placement and drug injection and on and on and on. So it was a planned vaginal delivery with neuroaxial labor anesthesia, so we know that's the right code. So the code is 01967. And then we also have to use a physical status modifier, uh, which are those P1 through P6 modifiers, and also an anesthesia modifier, which are those letter modifiers. So let me show you. I made some spreadsheets for you that I've also uploaded with a video to kind of make it easier for you to locate everything you need to learn to do this anesthesia math. So the first sheet has all of the anesthesia modifiers that you uh, may have to use. And so flipping back over here, we need to have two modifiers, one anesthesia and then one physical status. So we know that up here it says that her anesthesia was administered by an anesthesiologist. So we'll flip back over here, and that makes her anesthesiologist modifier AA. And then we need to figure out what her P modifier is. Um, and it did mention that she has controlled diabetes. And so that would make her P modifier AP2 because she has mild systemic disease. If it was uncontrolled, she would be a P3, but since it's controlled, that makes her P2. So we now know that her two modifiers are AA and P2. So then the whole code will be 01967-AA dash P2. So that's going to be her code. Okay, so now we know her code and her modifiers, and we have to find the base unit value for the code first. And I made a spreadsheet for that, too. If you go back over to the Excel file and open up the 2014 tab, these are the 2014 base unit codes, which are the only ones I could find quickly. Uh, so we need to look up her code. I forgot what it was already, 01967. Go back over here, and we're going to look at 
nine, six, seven. Here we go. So here's her code, zero, one, nine, six, seven. Nope. And that makes her base unit a five. So I'm going to type that in there. And then we need to determine the number of time units. Remember that one unit is 15 minutes, like we talked about earlier today. So um, she was under for 45 minutes, it looks like. And so that's going to be 45 divided by 15 will be three units. And then lastly, we need to find the relative value for the modifiers. So we'll go back over to our spreadsheet and go to sheet two and see if there's any relative value for our modifiers. So P2 has relative value of zero and AA uh, doesn't have any bearing on our billing. So it does, but not for this case. So we have uh, it doesn't have a relative value, I guess, to say. So we have a relative value of zero for our modifier. We'll put that over here. Okay, and then to find the locality-specific conversion for, for our county, for Solano County, uh, there's a third spreadsheet for that. So if you go over to sheet three, I highlighted it just for ease of uh, use, just to find it quicker. So these are the 2016 um, spec locality specific conversions. And the conversion for Solano County ends up being $23.29, so $23.29. So we'll put that over here. All right. So now we're going to set up our formula and solve this. Go away. Okay, so we're going to do our base units, which is five. Plus our time units, which are three. Plus our modifier value which is zero and then we multiply that by 23 uh, sorry my number lock wasn't on by 23.29 so I pull up my little calculator here and that's going to give us our fee Okay, so five plus three plus zero equals eight, which you could probably do in your head. And then we're gonna multiply that by 23.29. It's gonna give us 186.32 for this patient's anesthesia fee. So that one's pretty basic, um, pretty simple. Not a whole lot going on with that one. Um, so I wanted to give you a second example. So we'll work through this one together too. Okay, so for this patient, we have a 72 year old patient with COPD that had a left subcutaneous mastectomy for cancer last month. She now returns for a reconstruction, which is done with a single tram flap. Anesthesia was administered by an anesthesiologist. A review of the patient record indicates 180 minutes of anesthesia time. So using the conversion factor for Solano County, what will the payment for anesthesia services be calculated as? Here we go. You look at page 43 in your CPT manual, it's gonna tell you that the code is 00402. And that reads specifically reconstructive procedures on breast, for example, reduction or augmentation mammoplasty or muscle flaps. So this is a tram flap, that's a muscle flap. So that's gonna be our code, 00402. We also know that we have to use a physical status modifier and an anesthesiologist modifier. So this patient's modifier is going to be AA because it was an anesthesiologist that administered it. 
And then we're also going to have uh, a modifier of P3 because if we flip back over here, we see that on our little Excel sheet, a patient with severe systemic disease, including COPD, would be a P3 modifier. That P3 modifier is going to come with a relative value of 1. So we can plug that into our formula now. So I put 1 down here um, just to plug it in there. And then also we need to note that the patient uh, was 72 years old. And there are add-on codes that allow us to bill additionally and receive additional monies for um, patients that are of extreme age, either under a year old or over 70. So the code for the add-on code that we're going to look for can be found also on your anesthesia base units Excel sheet. If you look down at the bottom, they're down there. Um, so the base unit for uh, that we're going to use is 99100. And this modifier code is recognized for administration of anesthesia to a patient who is younger than age 1 or older than age 70. So we meet the criteria there because she's 72. 99100 comes with a base unit value of 1. So I plug that in over here also. So now we have two base unit values because we have two codes, 00402 and then 99100. Um, we have already decided, I plugged in the uh, value, the relative value for our modifier down here is 1 for that P3. AA doesn't have a value, so no big deal there. So determining the number of units, uh, time units, one unit is 15 minutes. And so if we do 180 divided by 15, it's going to give us 12 units. So we have 12 units here. And then we set up our formula. So we have 1 plus 5 for our two base units for our two codes, plus 12 for our units of time, plus 1 for our modifier. And we then multiply that by 2309 to get our anesthesia fee. Let me pull up my little calculator here again. So we are going to do 1 plus 5 plus 12 plus 1 gives us 19. And 19 times 23.09 is going to give us... Is that right? 438.71. Oops. So we would bill 438.71 for this patient's anesthesia fee. Okay, so hopefully this helps provide a little bit of clarity on understanding this anesthesia math. I'm going to work on putting together a very um, brief e &M coding video also, and we'll hopefully get that up in the morning. So let me know what you guys think if you need help, um, and make sure you also download the Excel file because it has all of the spreadsheets that I showed you here, here, and here. All right, thanks guys.